Here is an explanation video about t-test, analysis of variance ANOVA, and chi-square test. We will explain them in a simple way without using difficult formulas or technical terms. Here is the table of contents. First, we will explain when and how to use each test, and then we will explain the approach and probability calculation of each test. Let's start with this chapter right away. In statistical analysis, a common scenario is to compare two groups. For example, analyzing the differences in health conditions between smokers and non-smokers, comparing the blood pressure of people who took drug A with those who took drug B, or comparing the quality of products produced using method A and method B. This is where the comparison of two groups is often performed. So, what are we comparing between these two groups? When we want to determine whether there is a difference in the means between the two groups, we use a t-test. On the other hand, when we want to determine whether there is a difference in proportions or rates between the two groups, we use a chi-square test. The key point in choosing which test to use is whether we are comparing differences in means, or differences in proportions or rates. I have prepared an example to further illustrate the concept I just explained. There are two types of medication for lowering blood pressure in people with hypertension. We gathered 40 people with hypertension and randomly divided them into two groups. 20 people in group A took medication A, and 20 people in group B took medication B. Afterwards, we measured the blood pressure of these 40 people. Let's say the average blood pressure of the people in group A was lower than that of the people in group B. Now, can we conclude statistically that group A has lower average blood pressure? Or is this difference within the range of error or chance? The t-test is used to settle such debates. On the other hand, let's say that after measuring the blood pressure, it was found that more people in group A had blood pressure below the threshold for hypertension compared to group B. In other words, the percentage of people whose symptoms improved was higher in group A compared to group B. Now, can we conclude statistically that the proportion of people with blood pressure reduction is higher in group A? Or is this difference in percentage within the range of error or chance? The chi-square test is used to settle such debates. So far, we have only looked at comparisons between two groups. Now let's consider which test to use when comparing three or more groups. Please take a look at this table. The top row shows comparisons between two groups, while the bottom row shows comparisons between three or more groups. The left side is for comparing mean values, and the right side is for comparing proportions or rates. The t-test goes in this spot. On the other hand, ANOVA goes in this spot. ANOVA can be used for comparing the mean values of two groups as well as for comparing the mean values of three or more groups. Therefore, for comparing mean values of two groups, both t-test and ANOVA can be used and the design is such that the same results can be obtained regardless of which test is used. What about comparisons of proportions or rates? Chi-square test is often thought to go in this spot, but it actually goes in this spot. Similar to ANOVA, chi-square test can be used for comparing proportions or rates between two groups, as well as for comparing proportions among three or more groups or rates between two groups among three or more groups. Next, let's explain how each test calculates probabilities and what approach it takes. Let's start with the t-test. Please take a look at this bar graph. It shows the test results for four individuals in group A and four individuals in group B. Now, do you feel that there is a statistically significant difference in the average scores between group A and group B? Or do you feel that the difference is within the range of error? Impressions may vary from person to person. So, let's compare with other cases. There are a total of three cases. 
For reference, the average scores for each group are shown with red horizontal bars, and the differences between each individual score and the average score of their group are shown with black vertical bars to aid in assessment. Among these three cases, which one do you feel most strongly indicates, a difference in the average scores between two groups? Most people would likely answer that the rightmost case is the strongest, followed by the leftmost case, and the middle case is the weakest. So, why do we have such impressions? To help understand this, there are two types of differences. The first difference is the intergroup difference, which is represented by the length of the red arrows. The larger this difference is, the stronger we should feel that, there is a difference in the average values of the two groups. The second difference is the individual differences, which are the differences between the scores of each individual and the average score of their group, represented by the length of the black bars. We will refer to these as individual differences. The smaller these differences are, the stronger we should feel that, there is a difference in the average values of the two groups. For example, in the case on the right end, the intergroup difference is large and the individual differences are small. As a result, we feel strongly that, there is a difference in the average values of the two groups. In the case on the left end, the individual differences are small, but the intergroup difference is also small, so we do not feel the difference in the average values of the two groups as strongly. In the case in the middle, since the intergroup difference is small and the individual differences are large, few people feel that, there is a difference in the average values of the two groups. In this way, by comparing the ratio of these two types of differences, we can determine whether there is a statistically significant difference in the average values of the two groups or not. In t-tests, we are testing the difference in the average values of the two groups using this approach. The t-value is a value that is similar to the quotient obtained by dividing the intergroup difference by the individual differences. In reality, the calculation is a bit more complex, so this explanation is not entirely accurate. However, thinking of the t-value as a value similar to the quotient of this division can give you a rough idea without causing significant issues. Moreover, ANOVA also follows a similar approach to t-test for conducting hypothesis testing. Next, I will explain the mechanism of the chi-square test. To make it easy to understand, I will summarize it in this table using the example of the effectiveness of a drug. As you can see, there are 20 people in each of the two groups, with 12 people in group A and 2 people in group B who have recovered from hypertension, for a total of 14 people. On the other hand, there are 8 people in group A and 18 people in group B who did not recover, for a total of 26 people. Please note that the total number of people in the red frame is 40. Well, let's consider how these 40 people would be distributed if there were actually no difference in the recovery rate from hypertension between the two groups. For example, if there were no difference in the proportions of 14 people who recovered, it would be natural for it to be split evenly, with 7 people in each group. Similarly, if the total of non-recovered was 26 people, it would be natural for it to be split evenly with 13 people in each group. This natural distribution of people assuming no difference in proportions is called the expected value in the world of statistics, meaning this is how it should naturally be. On the other hand, the actual numbers in the red table on the left are called the observed value. Using the expected value and observed value, a simple calculation is performed to draw conclusions, which is the basic approach of chi-square test. Let's take a quick look at the specific calculation method. It's a simple calculation, and you don't need to memorize this calculation method, so please listen with a relaxed mind. The steps for calculation are as follows. First, subtract the expected value from the observed value. Next, square the result of the subtraction. Then, divide the squared result by the expected value. 
Let's take a look at the table again and review it slowly. First, subtract the expected value from the observed value. For example, in this cell, it would be 12 minus 7 equals 5. Perform the same calculation for the other three cells. Next, square the result of the subtraction. This means multiplying the same number twice. For example, in this cell, it would be 5 times 5 equals 25. Perform the same calculation for the other three cells. Then, divide the squared result by the expected value. For example, in this cell, it would be 25 divided by 7, which is approximately 3.57. Perform the same calculation for the other three cells. Finally, add up the four values from the cells, and that would be the chi-square value. In this case, it would be approximately 10.989, which is the sum of 3.57 plus 3.57 plus 1.92 plus 1.92. So, the chi-square value is approximately 10.989. That concludes the calculation. Lastly, let's explain the rules for p-value, which is common in t-tests, ANOVA, and chi-square tests. In t-tests, we calculated t-values, and in chi-square tests, we calculated chi-square values. By the way, in ANOVA, we calculate a similar value called f-value. Then, we consider the probability. We calculate the probability that, if there is no difference in the means of the two groups as assumed, what would be the chance of obtaining t values like these? The probability we obtain through this calculation is called the p value, which stands for probability. In many cases, if the p value is greater than 5%, we conclude that there is not a statistically significant difference, and if the p value is less than 5%, we conclude that there is a statistically significant difference. In many cases, decisions are made based on this criteria. However, this is not an absolute standard. It is desirable to determine the criteria flexibly depending on the nature of the matter being clarified. Let's briefly review today's content. T-test is used to test the difference between means of two groups. ANOVA can be used for two or more groups. Chi-square test is used for testing proportions or ratios in two or more groups. In t-test, important factors are inter-group difference and individual differences, which are calculated as t-value. Chi-square test involves analyzing observed and expected values to calculate chi-square value using a specific procedure. We calculate the probability that, if there is no difference in the means of the two groups as assumed, what would be the chance of obtaining t-values like these? In many cases, if the p-value is greater than 5%, we conclude that there is not a statistically significant difference, and if the p-value is less than 5%, we conclude that there is a statistically significant difference. In many cases, decisions are made based on this criteria. However, this is not an absolute standard. It is desirable to determine the criteria flexibly depending on the nature of the matter being clarified. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.